British yachtswoman was stranded in the Southern Ocean. And we'll take a look at the stories making headlines around the world. Good morning, welcome to Salt News. There's growing concern for a British tourist who's gone missing in New Zealand. Detectives in Auckland are investigating the disappearance of 22-year-old British backpacker Grace Mullane, who was last seen in the city on Saturday night. Grace's father told reporters in the last hour that he's been unable to make contact with his daughter for several days, including on her 22nd birthday last Sunday. He lost that contact with us on Saturday 1st of December. And as a family, we've been extremely concerned for her welfare. Grace is a lovely, outgoing, fun-loving, family-oriented daughter. Grace has never been out of contact for this amount of time. She's usually in daily contact with either her mother, myself, or two brothers, members of the family on social media. Cabinet ministers were summoned to Downing Street yesterday afternoon as the British Prime Minister attempted to bolster support for her Brexit deal before a crucial Commons vote on Tuesday. But yesterday, one of the most influential Conservative backbenchers told Sky News she should drop the vote rather than risk a humiliating defeat. Our political editor Faisal Islam reports. A Prime Minister in need of a Christmas miracle. Cabinet's called to Downing Street today for an update on the parliamentary wrangling. Number 10 insisted that they will push ahead with the vote next Tuesday. In the Commons, the economy on the agenda and the Chancellor dispatched to warn of the dangers of not taking the Prime Minister's deal. I do not believe that we can afford the economic cost of a no-deal exit. But I equally do not believe we can afford the political and societal cost of trying to undo the decision of the British people in the referendum. As options seem to close around them, the Chancellor doing what this government has done repeatedly and ruling something else out. The Norway option not on the table. It would continue to impose upon us the obligations of freedom of movement, which we believe the British people have voted against. And traffic in the wrong direction, another day, another day, confirming they'll vote against it. If I'm to retain my integrity, I must now oppose. Elsewhere in Whitehall, a meeting of senior MPs to be briefed by the emergency committee of the government on no-deal scenarios. Uh, well, all meetings are helpful, you know, all the information is helpful. It's a confidential briefing, uh, a briefing on what's going to be council terms, so uh, for those reasons I can't share with you what happened in the meeting. Crisis planning now in full flow. A new no deal planning report from Kent County Council makes for grim reading. The report makes clear that the planning scenario proposed by government has increased from three to six months of disruption. Although well, the rationale for this has not been provided by government, that Kent will need to cope with holding up to 10,000 HGVs on a routine basis across its motorway network with a host of knock-on consequences for staff and pupils who can't effectively travel to exams, for the difficulties with the transport of the deceased to post-mortem or body storage facilities, and that bulky waste treatment and waste wood, materials that rely on EU disposal, so the collection of these materials may be suspended to prevent blocking waste infrastructure. For local MPs, a terrible picture and precisely why they rebelled to try to prevent no deal earlier this week. But it might just help garner votes for Tuesday. The whole of Kent will be gridlocked. It would be a disaster. The result of no deal would be chaos, dislocation and huge economic difficulties. The former Foreign Secretary, not convinced. But the influential chair of the 1922 committee urging the government to think again about pushing forward with next Tuesday's vote. Whether it comes before Tuesday uh, or whether we don't decide another time, I'd far rather see the government win the vote.
As the debate goes on, the number of Conservative MPs willing to back the Prime Minister's deal appears to be going in the wrong direction. And if we are heading straight for a no deal, today the Chair of the Public Accounts Committee wrote to the head of Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs and said the time to implement optimal no deal solutions has now gone. The government department's crisis plans were not yet complete. Where can the Prime Minister go from here? Perhaps renegotiate with the European Union, but they are saying a clear no. C'est un accord équilibré. This is a balanced agreement, which is, and I must say this once again today, calmly and seriously, the only and best possible one. Five, four, three, two, one. For Mrs May, the countdown now on to the biggest vote in living history and perhaps something that could end her premiership. But for now, her nightmare before Christmas goes on. Faisal Islam, Sky News. Stock markets around the world have had heavy losses, with the FTSE suffering its worst one-day fall since the Brexit referendum. One reason has been the arrest in Canada of one of China's most senior technology executives, the chief financial officer of the mobile giant Huawei. But that's not the only cause. Our economics editor, Ed Conway, has the details. Grizzly day uh, for markets in the UK and uh, indeed in Europe and elsewhere around the world. Um, picking precisely what it is that has caused this is tricky. There are a panoply of different issues, but certainly that concern about China, trade wars with China, and indeed the arrest of the uh, CFO of Huawei in, uh, in Canada. In fact, it's the daughter of the founder is a concern. Let's have a look at markets just across Europe, uh, and starting with the UK. Um, this was the biggest uh, fall that we've seen actually in the UK in almost three years now. 3.2% down uh, for the FTSE 100, 3.15 actually. Uh, the FTSE 250, that's not quite as international, so that's a very much more domestic market also though.